Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome uh, to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, safe. I think that's the best way of saying it. Um, you know, we're only in what, six, seven months of uh, 2020 and you know, it just keeps on, it just 2020 just keeps on being relentless. Um, not enough that we've been stuck home, our lives have been altered, the economy sucks, people unemployed. Uh, you know, 2020 is unfortunately the gift that just keeps on giving and we, we just want to send it back. Um, I was one of the, you know, if you, if you haven't seen, if you don't live in the east, uh, Northeast or the East Coast, um, I, I haven't recorded a video in three days. Um, I was part of literally the hundreds of thousands of people who lost power um, because of the storm. And I know a lot of people are just uh, starting to recover. Um, I lost power on Tuesday at 1.30 and I got it back uh, yesterday around 3.30, uh, around 3.30 p.m. So uh, it's, it's just absolutely insane. And the worst part about uh, the last three days was not obviously because of trading. You know, I wanted a vacation. I haven't had a vacation in a year just because of, of COVID. And, and, and by this time I would have been taking my last vacation right before uh, school starts. So you know, I'm already uh, to the point of no return. But, you know, I've been wanting a vacation. This wasn't the vacation I was looking for. And the worst part of the last three days or so wasn't the, the power outages. I, you know, I didn't mind that. Okay. It's summertime. We were outside, you know, most of the time. Anyway, I was playing ball and this, that, the other thing with my kids. So that wasn't the issue. The biggest problem in the last three days, I've, I was literally in the presence of my mother-in-law nonstop every time I was home for about three days straight. And... At that point, a man is about to break. So thank you for the electricity gods and uh, you know, New Jersey Power and Light and everybody else who helped out to restore power. Uh, that was the biggest deal. So hopefully you guys are all uh, safe, right? Hopefully you guys are all uh, recovering. Uh, and also, let's send prayers out to um, you know the people in Beirut. I mean, just an up, absolute uh, tragedy there as well. So 2020 is definitely going down as... Just the absolute worst, like literally the absolute worst year for uh, mankind that you can you can really accumulative put together. So it's terrible. It's definitely up there. Uh, other than that, the market keeps on going, right? The market completely defines the the, the odds and the logic and the sensibility of what uh, the world is looking like. Um, again, more big big moves uh, for the index, as you saw, uh, two and a half plus moves uh, for uh, the S and P and the Dow which notched uh, six weeks now, six weeks of gains, consecutive gains. Uh, the NASDAQ uh, composite, again, you see uh, the power of uh, beta, right? Amazon, you know, and, and a Apple and Facebook, right? Um, just absolute ama amazing gains. You, you have nearly a 4% move and, you know, for all the, the experts, and again, they deem them experts, right? Talking about a decade worth of negative gains. This was six months ago. You're talking about an imminent stock market crash. This was six months ago. Uh, you know, people who are investing their money should be, you know, should be um, hospitalized for a mental institution. This was six months ago. Again, guys, it, it, our opinions mean nothing. Okay, I don't care how long you've been trading. Okay. We don't know what's going to happen. Okay, we never know what's going to happen. We have an idea, right? We have an opinion, but we actually have to wait for that opinion to become valid. And that's obviously uh, through technical analysis. And you know, I finally had a chance to kind of sit down uh, this morning. I woke up very, very early to do a lot of extensive uh, uh, charting because, again, I wasn't able to trade for the last several days. Uh, obviously, I put in a bunch of pivots. Uh, from the night before, I was literally charging my um, my um, my phone and my um, laptop in my car. Okay, and I was literally jumping on my my neighbor's uh, weak signal of Wi-Fi. They had a generator, and finally I gave in 
and I'm one of the people who, who just been fighting getting a generator. I finally have two companies coming on Wednesday to give me quotes to do my whole house because I was always in the in the camp of, well, it's only, uh, you know, we're only out for, for a day. What's the big deal? Um, a day turns into a week and next thing you know, you start rethinking things. So uh, I finally gave in, throw in the towel. I'm, get, I'm getting a generator uh, for the house. But uh, other than that, I mean, you, you look at what the market has done uh, it's been amazing. Uh, Apple has just been absolutely nuts. I mean, absolutely, just absolutely crazy approaching uh, a two bi two trillion dollar uh, valuation. Uh, Facebook, uh, definitely the move of the last several days. And again, I've been, you know, I've been literally putting in pivots uh, just because I wasn't trading. I was still putting in pivots. And again, it really does show you uh, that nobody needs to hold your hand. It's all about technical analysis. Uh, Facebook, obviously is the number one benefactor of the whole Trump waking up one morning and say, wait a minute, TikTok is bad. They're stealing information. This is a Trojan horse. We have to focus all our energy on TikTok. Again, TikTok doesn't get sold in the next 40 days. It will be banned, right? And every 10, 11, 12 year old uh, that's making crazy seven second videos, dancing and blowing themselves up and you know, eating a cat. I don't know what the hell they do on there, but all of them are going to need a new platform. And obviously Facebook uh, introduced reels uh, over the last couple of days on Instagram. This will obviously be a huge, huge, uh, you know, huge deal for Facebook because again, if TikTok does get banned in the United States, all these uh, tweeners and teens will be going right to Instagram and going into the reels business. So big, big week for Facebook. Um, look, I, I think I think what we're getting into is the point of, I think a lot of people are, are just kind of a wit's end of what the market is doing. They're either um, really, really chasing higher prices or really complaining about people who are chasing higher prices. And uh, you know, I see this, I, I've been seeing this now for the last six out of seven months. The first month obviously was that big destruction of equity prices uh, in March. But where you look at you know the final tally, it really is uh, extraordinary. So I, I think the, the best piece of advice right now is again, like I've been saying for for months, just take it day by day. Okay, you, again, we don't need to know, uh, you know, you don't you don't need to know what's going to happen two weeks ago. Somebody asked me uh, on Twitter two days ago, hey Dan, I know you're having a power outage, and I know you have like on three percent in your cell phone, but hey, what do you think about Tesla for the next year? What do you think about Tesla the next year? I don't know. Maybe it goes to 2000, maybe it goes to 200. I have no idea, right? Take it, take it day by day. Again, we're trying to, a lot of people are trying to over, over guess, okay? It's not even opinions. They're trying to over guess. And again, trading is not guessing. Trading is, again, uh, getting as much data as possible and waiting for that data, you know, to kind of play out in your process. Again, whatever your process is. And I think going into, uh, this week, again, the game plan still is, you know, bullish on most names. Uh, I'll show you in a few minutes where beta is. I think beta to start the week uh, is a little bit of a sticky place. Again, I don't think there is the highest value uh, going into Monday or Tuesday, at least on the upside in some of these names. You know, Facebook's still strong. Apple is still strong. We'll go through some charts. I want to show you kind of what I'm talking about. But there is still a lot of value Um in other places, and if you know, for all you guys who are getting uh, the weekend, you know, the weekend uh, pivot watch, you'll notice there's a bunch of you know five dollar stocks, twenty dollar stocks, ten dollar stocks. There's there's speculation money there, and again, until and again, I don't want to you know I don't want to use them as a punching bag, but you know, kind of media, not even social media, but media has deemed the Robin Hood uh, effect as kind of retail sentiment. But as long as the Robin Hood effect or retail sentiment continues to trade, you know, continues to trade and continues to chase, you know, stocks like this, right? Like Kodaks of the world and, you know, and anything like this. I'm just using Kodak as an example. Uh, the market will continue to have fuel to the fire. And now we're just waiting for the Democrats uh, and the Republicans to kind of get their, you know, ducks in a row to kind of, you know, agree on the next stage of stimulus for COVID. So again, the question is, what is going to slow down this market? We just ran through earnings, right? Most of the uh, heavyweight technology names already reported. I still, I still, we're, we're waiting on, uh, I think we're still waiting on NVIDIA. Okay, still with NVIDIA. I think Alibaba as well. But most of them are out of the way. And now that they're showing that they're, you know, really Teflon, uh, Teflon 
economic companies, you know, especially Amazon, the Facebooks, uh, the Apples of the world, now we're waiting for, well, what's going to happen for the next leg up? Or is there going to be a next leg up? Again, we don't need to answer that question today, but at least have a common sense of where the sentiment is. Again, don't fight the Fed. If the Fed is continuing to tell you there's stimulus, 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 stimulus coming, the last thing you should turn around and say, you know what? I want to take a macro short position because, again, the market's overvalued, according to you. Again, fair value is the closest... Uh, is the closing price, right? If a stock closes at 150, that's fair value. That's where the buyers and sellers in the last price of the day at four o'clock deem it to be fair value. It's not where you want it to be. It's not where you think it should be. That is fair value. Until buyers uh, run out of steam and sellers take over, the stock continues to go higher. And obviously that's the other way around. So going into this week, and I want to kind of show you some indexes to say where they are compared to where uh, beta is, uh, I want to sh kind of show a picture. Uh, for the week, again, strong move for, for the NASDAQ, driven obviously uh, by technology shares, again, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Apples of the world. Again, uh, what, what I like, what I saw Friday, you know, and, I, and I did extensive chart work uh, this morning, um, I like how even though they tried to sell off the NASDAQ composite, um, at the end of the day, they reclaim the five-day moving average. Again, the five-day moving average is an incredibly important, um, you know, kind of important study for the shortest-term sentiment. So that's bullish. Uh, if you look at the S&P, and we'll use the SPIs as uh, kind of a barometer, you know, this is air, right? This is all air. The SPIs broke out a couple of days ago uh, above this 327.50 level and continues to make new highs. So when you look at the Dow Jones Industrials, and we've talked about it a couple of weeks ago, how they were just stuck in the range. Well, they're above the range. And now they're, you know, they're toying with taking out all-time highs. And this is the diamonds uh, above this uh, 276.40 level for continuation of all-time highs. Even the Russell that was lagging, right? The IWM that was sitting in this channel for a very, very long time and then sitting in this channel for a very, very long time finally broke out as well. So everything on the surface looks really, really good. Again, you know, we don't trade based on the scoreboard. We trade based on sentiment. So again, I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But when you look at where beta is right now compared to where the NASDAQ 100 is, and you'll quickly see why going into Monday session, um, I want to be a little bit more patient with beta. Um, I thought, first of all, I got a ton of great feedback. Uh, you know, I was putting in pivots Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, even though I couldn't trade. Phenomenal moves. And we'll show you, uh, especially Thursday uh, with Apple and Facebook. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and that spilled over into Friday's session with Facebook. Uh, but, but, but again, when you look at where these stocks are right now, you're, and again, I'm not trying to uh, put water on this hot fire. I'm, again, I'm just saying where reality is. And this is, I think, a week, at least the start of the week, we should definitely pay attention uh, to smaller price names. I'm not talking about small caps, but smaller price names uh, that are not beta. Of course, you're going to have some value to the beta side. We always will just because of the measured potential of the average range of the channels. But macro wise, I think there's better money flow, at least at the early part of the week in other places, okay, until stocks start to confirm channels basically back to the upside uh, or to the downside. Obviously, what's been working really, really, really well, and I've been, I've been speaking about this into nausea, for, especially for all you guys who are, um, who have smaller accounts, right? And again, that's not really my business. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not the person to, you know, I, I, I can't tell you how to build a small account. I have, I have no idea. Okay. I have zero idea. Uh, somebody told me, you know, you know, if, you know, somebody asked me uh, a year ago, six months ago, Hey Dan, if you were, you know, if you had to take $5,000, can you turn it into 50? No, I wouldn't know how. How do you turn five grand into trading beta? When I trade four shares of Tesla, I don't know how to do it. So I'm not the expert. Uh, you know, go to social media. They'll tell you how to turn five, you know, five hundred dollars into five million. I have no idea how to do that. So I give you guys a lot of credit who are trading with smaller accounts. But the one thing that is working for all you guys who do have smaller accounts, I've been talking about this now uh, for months, is trading small cap option order flow, and that's been amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. And you know, you spend you know whatever it is, one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars on a scanner. Uh, I know it's a lot for some of you guys who do have smaller accounts, but it's so worth it because all you need to do is catch one, you know, one flow, one option flow a week. And, and, some, and now they're giving them pretty much once, a, almost once a day. But if you can just catch one a week, right, uh, deep out of the money uh, option flow, you know, on, on a dollar stock with a 250 uh, near-term expiration, 
those trades are working very, very well. So I, I, in, in my opinion, if I had to do that, if I had, you know, if I was in a situation of starting out, I would be concentrating on that. Like I'd be literally concentrating on small cap order flow. That's the, and from what we've, we've been having really, really great success. I've been tweeting these things nonstop and they've been popping 15, 20, 25 cents. Some of these things have been gapping the next day, really, really strong. So uh, again, I'm not a, I'm not one of these guys who, I have no idea how to turn a small account to a big one. I have no idea. Uh, but if I had a small account, I hell, that's what I would be doing. I'd be investing in an option scanner to go, you know, and, and start trading option order flight. That's the, that's the highest probability that I've seen uh, to trading these small cap markets. But uh, going into this week, again, I am kind of delta neutral to a little bit positive uh, on beta. Uh, everything else, I am still positive. Uh, again, the key uh, close on the Qs, obviously, is going, is going to be below the five day. If As long as it stays above the five day, it's going to be very, very bullish. At first close, below the five day, obviously, starts the retracement uh, to lower levels. Um, so let's look at some charts. I kind of want to show you what I'm talking about here. That's why I'm kind of delta neutral on, uh, on beta. So... Uh, Tesla, right? Tesla has been a phenomenal trader. Uh, it's kind of stuck in this channel here. Again, a lot of speculation. You've been, I'm sure you guys have been hearing now for like three, four weeks. Uh, speculation that they will be added to the S and P 500. Again, speculation. Everybody's running with it. Is it possible? Absolutely. Uh, again, it really needs to either uh, confirm the top of the channel right over here or start losing the bottom of the channel right here uh, to get this thing going. So it's, again, it's kind of stuck in no man's land. Uh, Netflix had a chance to break out on Friday. I really, really liked it. I'll show you on the, on the, on the, uh, on the pivot field. Uh, it really needed to get above this 511 and it failed. So it, again, it's back to in, in the middle of the range. So again, there's no uh, edge there as well. Uh, Roku, you know, they reported this week kind of all over the place. Again, you can see they're kind of stuck in the middle range. Nothing really uh, going on as well. Uh, Amazon had a really, really big chance. Uh, we had a couple of pivots, really big pivots um, this week on it. But it really had a big chance to really explode. And if you notice here, it keeps on getting rejected off this 3250 level, right? 3250, 3250, 3250. So you got a triple top here at 3250 on Amazon. So now it's stuck in the middle of the range. Again, it's very positive that, it, again, it reclaimed the five day moving average. But you can see it's stuck in the middle of the range. You know, can it take out Friday's low and go lower? Absolutely. But again, as you can see just by your naked eye, it's stuck in the middle of the range as well. Uh, BYND came out with earnings. This one, at least you have, uh, you know, this one I kind of like on the short side. Um, you know, three days in a row, actually four days in a row, it had that move, big move into, into earnings, and then they sold it off. You have, you have one, two, three, four days in a row of higher lows. You can see that. If it just takes out this channel right over here, I do like it to the short side. So that one I will be uh, watching uh, to the downside. Uh, Zoom, again, more cases are starting to rise. The question is, again, are you sending your kid to school? Are you not sending your kid to school? Uh, Zoom, obviously, has is, is, is been a phenomenal performer. Um, the last day I traded was on Tuesday, right? I, that was the last trade I literally did was on Zoom. I caught it for a really, really nice move, uh, but it's stuck in the middle of the range, right? You can see this is stuck in the middle of the range as well. Again, bullish that it reclaimed the 10-day moving average, but again, there is no macro point of view. Uh, NVIDIA, you can see this as well, really, really big move here. Um, again, it's kind of teetering. Obviously, I think the value is to the downside if it confirms, but again, it reclaimed uh, it reclaimed the five-day moving average as well, and you could go through all of them. Uh, Shopify, same thing. You'll notice the same thing on everything. Uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft actually looks good if it could just reclaim uh, this top of the level here. Again, more speculation of them buying, possibly buying TikTok, obviously, is going to fuel the fire to the upside. But again, we have to wait. We can't anticipate that happening. Uh, Apple, just an amazing run, um, held the five-day moving average. Uh, again, Two trillion dollar, uh, two trillion dollar value again, monster, monster. Boeing had a chance to break out this week and it failed. Uh, it failed off the seventy five level uh, again for the second time in a row. So this thing is in no man's land as well. So this is kind of my point where beta is not here nor there. Uh, again, we're going to get value um, in in the beta in beta market somewhere. Sure, of course. Obviously, buying Apple on rising uh, sixty minute support is still very very important. Buying Facebook on sixty minute support is still very, very important, as you saw uh, on Thursday for both of them, right? Both of them. And again, guys, I, I keep on saying this is the, the highest probability trade in beta. 
anytime, okay, anytime you see uh, a cartoonish like move the day before and a stock opens up, you know, opens red, okay, there is an incredibly high probability that the stock will not only go red to green, but just will absolutely explode. And you saw that this week, both with Facebook and you saw that this week with uh, Apple as well. So again, we continue to watch these things off 60 minute dips and obviously uh, looking for other places as well to kind of manufacture runs until beta you know, picks a direction, picks a directional bias. So uh, Friday, there wasn't a lot of pivots. Again, you'll see a lot of names, uh, a lot of names just failed at top of the range. But again, you'll see some other names. Again, you know, we see some other names that had, again, some pretty impressive uh, money flow, both on the option flow that gave uh, opportunity. So let's talk about it. So obviously, uh, Amazon, we just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, 3250 uh, rejection twice needs to build, never got there. Netflix 511, never got there. Uh, Amazon gave the dip. For all you guys who are not in the live webinar, I know um, I know my man Joe you texted me right away. Uh, Amazon dipped to that 450 and a half level and it, it almost went to red to green. So it was a huge move there. Alibaba still needs to report, never got close to this level. Same thing on Facebook. And this is kind of my point of 60 minute dip or red to green. Facebook 60 minute dip. Uh, red to green above uh, 267 confirmation. I mean, look what, what Facebook did. I mean, it just absolutely exploded. It took out this 267 level and ran to 279. Just an absolute huge move. Again, congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught that uh, as well. Again, Boeing, Boeing failed for the second time uh, to get to that level. Uh, Google, 1507, 1508 needs to build. Uh, there was a nice spike on Google. Didn't quite get to the 1535 area. But took out, you know, here it is right here. Took out that 1507, 1508 level, uh, went to 1520. Again, you know, nice move on, on Google before it kind of uh, came back in. So good job for all you guys who caught that as well. Uh, beyond, this is the level I like going into this week. This 130 level is the line in the sand. If it starts building below, uh, I think it could get hit. Uh, cars had some pretty good call buying on Thursday. And again, this is my old point that you don't need to trade uh, pivots on beta to trade pivots. You could trade pivots on anything, on, on Bitcoin, on crypto, on e-minis, what, whatever your heart desires, you can trade uh, You can trade pivots. Cars, 925, 930 needs to build. Uh, again, not a huge move, right? Okay, not a huge move, but again, the point is it took out the 925 uh, and went to 966. Again, for all you guys who are trading uh, the smaller, smaller price names, is 40 cents a good move on a $9 stock, right? Again, you don't. Again, not every single trade needs to be five bucks. So again, there's value there. Uh, space 19, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, nice move on space to the downside. Uh, space traded all the way down to 18 and change. Uh, again, I think there's more downside to this thing. Once this thing loses 18, it goes right to 17, right to the to the rising Bollinger Band. So good move for all you guys who caught uh, space as well. Uh, noodles again had option flow a couple of weeks back. Uh, noodles 755, uh, 760 needs to build again. Nothing to do with beta, right? There's nothing to do with beta. It's just again, we're we're trying to put as much value as as possible for everybody to take advantage. So uh, here is the not you know 755, and it went to almost eight bucks again. Eight, five, you know 40, 50 cent move on a seven dollar stock is that good, right? Again, you have to you have to decide if, if that's your uh, if that's your sweet spot. That's your sweet spot. Uh, G and K. Uh, 720 needs to build. Uh, GNK. Let me see what GNK did. I don't even know what GNK did. Uh, didn't quite get there. Didn't quite get there. Went right to 720. And never obviously gave a second entry. So that 720 is still a big number. Uh, TTD was a nice move. Uh, TTD 501 needs to build. Uh, here was TTD, right? Here was TTD. Here was a 60 minute view on TTD, right? 501 right here. And it, oh, excuse me, oh, excuse me, right there, 501 right here, and it went to uh, 510. Again, nice move on TTD. If you got this trade, great job. Again, unfortunately, it was sitting there in the dark, watching everything from the sidelines. And again, um, you know, like again, here's my message. Uh, here's my message. Second entries on everything. Uh, Facebook, just an absolute beast. Uh, big, big move. Uh, I was actually very surprised that Apple never went red, uh, but it never, never did. It never, actually never did. Uh, nice move on cars. Um, it's, this is a joke, obviously. Um, this is a joke, obviously. Uh, Microsoft, nothing. Noodles spiking. TTD spiking. New highs. 
And that's it. So my message was basically uh, my power has been restored. I am 100% uh, capacity. Uh, for all you guys who are joining us, uh, especially in the live webinar uh, or on the Twitter feed on Monday, uh, please make it your opportunity to kind of watch the workshops this week, uh, this weekend. Again, it's over 10 hours of breaking down uh, the PS60 theory. It's much better if you join the workshop uh, after you've at least kind of got uh, the nuts and bolts of what we do. Because again, I, I can feed you pivots till you're blue in the face, but if you are not, if you don't understand the moving parts, you're really cheating your development. Okay, there's, 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 it's so much incredible, great feeling to be in control of your trading. And if you don't understand the moving parts, you're only going backwards. So guys, have a great, great weekend. Uh, great to be back uh, Monday morning, come fresh to morning strategy. And with God's help, I'll see you all there. Take care, guys. Have a great, great weekend. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.